What's up, guys? It's your host, Darius Spartana Guards DxD, back with another What If Naruto Was in High School DxD Part 7, and today we are in Chapter 8. So, thank you for all the support on this series. Hit the subscribe and like button. These do take a while. Without further ado, let's go ahead and roll right into Chapter 8. Now, there they were with Orphis, one of the great beings. Not, not the one they intended to summon, which was Big Red. What now, Kuruma? asked a troubled Naruto. I don't know, kid said Kurama with the same amount of cluelessness as Naruto added. Execute plan GTFO for real this time? What? Don't be absurd, Kurama. We need to talk with Great Red. It was your plan anyway. Why are you bailing now? asked Naruto. I know, kid. We don't know what this one intends of us. We can't risk making enemies when Kaguya is on the prowl, said Kurama with forethought. We might not get another chance to speak with Great Red like this again, Kurama. I doubt Orphus will let us go either she seems to have a plan for us and she she said our trusty blonde while naruto and kurama were having their internal debate on what to do orphus made her presence known and said you will help me fight great red and regain my home once again your home asked naruto orphus nodded and said the dimensional gap is my home i want to regain my internal silence here but great red stands in my way he needs to be killed so you will help me along with the others in my group Naruto heard this look at Kurama. Both eyed each other at the same time and said, Yep, she's crazy. Yep, she's crazy. There were a few moments of silence. Naruto looked at Orphus with a scrutinizing eye and then made his decision and said, Yeah, that's not happening, Orphus. I have my own problems and I require some assistance from Great Red on it, said Naruto. What help do you require? I will help you and you will help me, said Orvis, not backing off. She didn't exactly know how strong Naruto was, but she definitely knew that he would be able to help her defeat Great Red all by himself. She might not even need the others in her little band. Kuroma? asked Naruto. Kuroma shook his head and said, She may be the dragon of affinity, but our matter is not worth enough to fight against Great Red for her. Naruto sighed and shook his head and said, Look. I am sorry, Orphus, but you have to find someone else to fight for you. I am not interested in fighting Great Red, so please leave me alone. Orphus looked at Naruto for a moment and judged her next move. She said, You will not help me when I ask you politely, therefore I must convince you in a different way. She immediately attacked Naruto with one of her spells, and Naruto dodged and moved away from Orphus. Kuruma said to him, irritated, Smooth talking, dumbass! Now you have done it. I, ex I specifically told you not to make any more everies than we, than we already have. Oi, how can I be blamed for this mess? You heard her. She's practically the d dead set on us helping her out. As Naruto in equally to irritated tone. This is not the time for arguing, kid. Look up front when you are battling, said Kar Kuruma. Naruto noticed the spell coming his way and dodged it. Orphus lunged forward towards, uh, towards her and threw some snakes from her hand. Fuck, snakes. Why does it have to be snakes every fucking time? Focus, kid. She's charging up for a big one, said Kuruma. Naruto then noticed that Orphus was charging up her magic for a big spell, thus he prepared to counter the technique with his own. All right, time for a tailed beast bomb, said Naruto, preparing a gigantic tailed beast bomb that was ready to be fired. Orphus fired her spell at Naruto, which looked like a purple wave. Naruto fired the tailed beast bomb at the wave, resulting in explosion threw both Orphus and Naruto off by 100 meters. This didn't stop either of them as they both con continually fired off a big destructive magic and chakra techniques. The result, of th the result was a draw. Naruto was not exhausted, but the flurry of chakra techniques did not cause him to lose a little in the reserves. How is she able to continually fire that much magic? She doesn't even look like she broke a sweat. Her magic reserve shouldn't be that big, thought Naruto. Kuruma sighed and said, It's not the magic reserves, it's the place we are in. Look at her closely, Naruto. Naruto did that did that, and noticed that what Kuruma was talking about. He asked, Is she drawing energy from this place? Kuruma explained, This is her home turf, Naruto. We cannot beat her here. Anywhere else it might be easy, but it's a place to regain her lost energy as it closely bonded to her. Ah, damn it. At the, at the moment, Naruto felt another energy besides him. Is that... Asked Naruto. Damn right, Lizard shows up at the worst possible time, said Kuruma. He's here, said Orphus, showing the slightest amount of negative emotion. A crack opened up beside them and came out a terrifying red dragon with two pairs of wings. He might not be opening his mouth to speak, but all of them were able to clearly hear what he thought. Oi, you bastards! Which one of you had the fucking nerve to interrupt my super awesome, amazingly bully and extravagant stunt, huh? Tell me. Oh, it's you, Orphus, said Great Red. He had a deep, gradual voice that sounded like a male. Don't call me a casually bi- you idiot, Red. Give me back my home, said Orphus. 
Nope, I love this place as much as you do. I still want to do my stunts here. If you want solitude so much, find some place else, said Great Red. I will get this place back from you someday, so, someday said Orphus. But try getting it if you can. Cry, baby Orphus, said Great Red. He then looked at Naruto and Kuruma and added, Why the fuck are you guys here? We had an agreement to never face each other again, didn't we, Naruto Uzumaki? We have a problem, Red. We need your help with that, said Naruto. My help? You can kiss my ass and say goodbye. I'm not helping you in any way possible, and said Great Red and added. In fact, I have a score to settle with you for interrupting my stunt the second time. Orphus, you are also not getting away very easily this time, so let's fight. Great. Now what, said Naruto. Now we fight, said Kuruma and that with a gun. It's been a while since we had a good old-fashioned spar, didn't we? Shall we go out, asked Naruto. We kicked their asses Fuck sparring energy, said Kuruma. Ready to go all out? Naruto then released all of his and Kuruma's power. He was able to retain the size of a fully grown nine-tailed fox and half the size of Great Red. It's if, it's, if it's a fight you want, it's a fight you'll get, said Naruto. I don't want to fight in this battle since you are not going to allow me to go outside without one, said Orphus, but she was no longer holding back. She started it to change as her clothes disappeared with a bright light. She was transforming into a big dragon until she retained the same size as Naruto and Kuruma. She looked at the huge snake with black scales, then it shrined purple illuminated. She had a single pair of wings and two pair of short limbs. I am going to kill you now. Orphus and Naruto then charged at Great Red. Unusual for his size, though, Great Red was moving equally fast. All three of them involved in a terrifying smackdown. Naruto was fight tailed beast bombs at Great Red while Orphus was using her magic at him. Great Red flinched when some of the attacks had him and he turned serious. All right, now you guys have done it, said Great Red. Well, the guy is officially pissed off. Careful, Naruto, said Kuruma, where Naruto of the huge laser beam that came his way. Naruto... Who noticed it dodged in his hair and his breath and sigh like it was only by an inch great scott that was way too close for comfort said naruto intimidating for him and relieved tension yeah though it seems that orphus isn't as lucky as we are said kuruma orphus got hit by the laser beam backed up but she slowly started to regenerate the wounds naruto then fired another tailed beast bomb at great red but then just passed right through him what the naruto wasn't giving any time to think as of great red swept him away it did a lot of damage to him breaking all of his ribs but when he was kuruma's tracker mode he was able to regenerate quite easily what the hell was that that's why I am called the dragon of dreams. I am the dragon who mocks the concept of reality. I turn reality into fantasy and fantasy into reality, said Grey Red. This time he charged more than 10 laser beams at Naruto and fired simultaneously. The fuck does any, does that mean anything he thinks or dreams will become real? Fuck, that's way too OP. He was, he was not this serious last time we faced, said Naruto with a pale face. He continued to dodge the laser attacks fired at him, but the last one made his way into him. Kuruma's chakra construct was able to take the attack. It was still considerably a large damage on Naruto. Great Red then attacked again, but this time Great Being used a much, a bunch of mortal spells greatly amplified with his magic power. Naruto used a bunch of elemental chakra techniques to counter them, but all of them turned useless as Great Red just turned them from reality to illusion. Naruto dodged the techniques range and time. He couldn't find a weakness and just panic. Shit, what do I do? Do I have do I have to use six paths mode already? Thought Naruto. Now is not the time to panic, Brack. Every technique has a weakness. Didn't we already face another one like this? How did we beat that kid, Obito? Asked Kurama while uh, advertising Naruto on how to act using Itachi's word philosophy. Obito. That was different. He was using a spatial distortion to avoid our attacks. The only way we could beat him, said Naruto, he turned side in the second half. He smiled at Kuruma and proceeded to attack her. Yet, he made a bunch of shadow clones and all of them much to with the same amount of Kuruma's chakra. I already told you it's useless. Any and all attacks I see are ineffective on me, said Great Red. The clones who went in automatically dispelled, but the one of them managed to throw kunai in near Great Red's eye. Great Red merely dodged it by thinking upon it was an illusion and had passed through. Naruto and Great Red repeated the process several times and exchanged a couple of blows with their fists. Naruto was now slightly exhausted as he used up 20% of his reserves. Great Red didn't break a set though, he was firing laser beams using energy to amplify the power of his arms. Naruto figured that it had to be because of the place they were in just like it went earlier battle with Orphus. Cease resisting. The last time we fought was merely a formal spar. This time I'm fighting you seriously, so prepare to die for real, said Great Red and moved his claws forward to grab Naruto. 
Naruto waited over there in a defensive position, ready to dodge, but also started charging up a tailed beast bot. He then thought, now. He fired a tailed beast bomb at Great Red, who did the same thing with the attack again. However, when he thought that he dodged the attack, he felt the blow on many spaces near his torso and neck. What the? Thought Great Red. It was then he noticed that there were six great purple balls fired from six different Naruto's at the different locations from behind. The problem with your technique is that you need to see the attacks coming at you for you to judge it to be an illusion. Your, your manipulation of a fantasy and reality can be for a short duration as it's only applicable on intimatomic objects, said Naruto. Great Red, who took major damage from the attacks, looked at him and laughed and he said, ha, 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 you got me good this time, Naruto Uzumaki, you have my respect. However, you were wrong on one part. It's not only inanimate objects, but I can manipulate the reality of living objects too, said Great Red, phasing an Orphis through him who came to slash her claws at the time and roared. Naruto saw the incoming Orphis, dodged her and grabbed her by the neck and threw her away. However, you are not the only person in this world who I cannot control, as you were never born from this universe naturally. The way you came here was breaking the laws of fantasy and reality, so I cannot do anything with you. My control goes as far as the laws hold. However, for Orphus, said Great Red, and this time took damage from Orphus' surprise giant laser attack that cut through one of his wings. Ah, said Great Red, and attacked at Orphus. Orphus dodged his attack and gave him a beam of her own. She saw the attack was phased and that she was right in the middle of being clawed by Great Red. She blocked her front with her hands and wings preparing to block of an attack and prepared some shielding spells just in case. However, the attack never came. Instead, Naruto was in front of her holding back uh, Great Red by his wings. Why did you help me? asked Orphus. Because this battle is unnecessary, said Naruto. What are you talking about, Naruto Uzumaki? I haven't had this much fun in ages. We are going to continue this battle to the end, said Great Red with a battle frenzy while getting away from Naruto's grip. Why does he crave some battle so much now? He was very docile and wanted to do this as stunts in peace in the beginning. What made him change, thought Naruto. Kuruma answered him. Dragons are beings of great power. The tailed beast may be different, but beings of power always yearn for a good battle, Me and my, just like me and my siblings. Is that right? Speaking of which, the others are napping pretty soundly, but can I hear them outside, said Naruto, and that's a link. We are here, Naruto, we have been awake for quite a while, said now, now active Madabi. Ah, Madabi, if you guys are awake, then why didn't you guys say so? I could have used your help here, said Naruto. We were just not bothered with it. You seemed like you could handle it by yourself. Besides, you're not going all out, said Son Goku. Well, you have a point, said Naruto, but now that he saw it must come to an end, seems I must have to put a stop to this, said Naruto. He released his Kuruma Chaka Sage Mode and came back in his basic Sage Mode. He accessed the Six Paths Mode and he once again his blazing golden coat with nine Makatados on his back. His whisker marks were pronounced once again and weird marks encircled his body. However, this time he manifested six black balls that levitated around his back and had two black rods in his hand. It was at this moment that both great beings felt confused. They had saw that he had turned smaller and began to assume he turned to a weaker form. They didn't feel any power coming off him. Great Red turned and annoyed at this shouted, Naruto, what are you doing, Naruto Uzumaki? Bring back your earlier form. I want to have a good fight when I'm far up, said Great Red. Orphis remained silent and contemplated. She wasn't stupid and thoughtless. Unlike Great Red, who was in a battle frenzy, she knew that Naruto wouldn't have accessed this form without a reason. Naruto merely looked at Great Red with a static face and said, I don't have any more time to play with you, Great Red, so let's end this fight. He, he then looked at Orphis and said, I don't know what's going on between you and Red over here, and I frankly don't care. You are Tendus now. Bah! Who are you to end our fight? You have pretty big nerve talking like that, mortal, said Great Red, who lunged at Naruto right at him. Naruto merely looked at the attack and stopped him with merely one hand. He then grabbed he then grabbed Great Red and threw him off. What the fuck? Great Red wasn't even given enough time to think as Naruto continuously attacked him from all places. He created shackles that did the same. It was like it was like looking at a group of bullies grouping on a poor side and here the poor side being Great Red. Great Red wasn't even given a chance to get back up. Naruto then lunged forward with the rod. Great Red thought that he could dodge all the minute in an object, however, it was useless as the rod still hit him with a great force, making him fly miles away from his original position. How did that rod hit me? 
I thought that it was an object. It should still obey the laws of reality, thought Great Red. Naruto, who heard Great Red's thoughts, explained, This rod is made of the balls behind me. They are called truth seeker balls. They are made of energy called chakra. They are made of pure energy. Energy still obeys the laws of reality. We may not see it, but it manifests into other many forms that we perceive as real. How in this world is that thing able to harm me? Asked Great Red with anger and fear in his tone. Naruto answered, it is energy, yes, but the energy is given a stable form. It erases all kinds of matter that it touches. It is not bound by the laws of physics. It is, it, by the laws of physics. It already breaks it by existing. Don't you see the utter blackness? That is because its existence is a contradiction. He then threw all six truth seeker balls at Great Red's wings, which managed to penetrate his forming various holes in its body. It was the first time ever since birth that Great Red was truly scared of his existence. That being utterly scared at a mortal that we did the power to end his existence. Naruto satirically laughed and looked at Great Red and asked, Now that you have finally witnessed my power, do you still want to fight? I have already proven that I could kill you right here and now. It seems that you are a waste of time, doesn't it? Great Red looked at it. Great Red could not dumbly at what Naruto said. He thought to himself, fuck being brave. I don't want to die just because I pissed off a guy for a petty reason. Naruto then looked at Orphus and said, I have neither problems with you nor do I have any business with you, Orphus. So let's stop fighting, shall we? Orphus could just dumbly nod her head, just like Great Red. All right, then let's wrap this, let's wrap this up, shall we? Naruto then added, however, I do have some questions that need to be answered, Great Red. Great Red then sighed and said, though I don't like it, you are right. I am indeed the one that will draw the short end of the stick if I continue to fight you. Dragons are beings that respect those who are equally strong or stronger than themselves. I, Great Red, give you my deepest respect, Master Zamaki. I hope you forgive me for my previous transgressions. Great Red bowed his head towards Naruto. Naruto just grinned and waved it off. Forget the formalities with me, Red. Just call me Naruto. Let bygones be bygones. It's never too late to start as friends, ain't it? Great Red, who saw this give a nod and a grin of his own, he was rather impressed with the humility that Naruto showed if he was stronger than himself. It was a trait that he liked about Naruto. He then said, as you wish, my friend. So what do you need, said Great Red. Well, you see, I have a problem. A troublesome woman from my world who somehow made it over here. The last time I checked, I sealed her in another dimension with no way or out. Though somehow she was able to break it. My friend who is inside of me, Kuruma, has a suspicion and wanted to check with you. All right, then. What's the question? Naruto turned silent and closed his eyes. The moment he reopened his eyes, he, he, eyes had turned to slit eyes of a fox. He then said in a deep, gradual voice, Great Red. This is Kuruma. I am talking to you by possessing Naruto's body, said Kuruma. Great Red nodded and motioned Kuruma to continue. Kuruma then took his cue and asked, Could you kindly check out the space we entered when we first met you? I and Naruto do not know the exact place we entered from into this world as only the final coordinates are known to us, are unknown to us. The rest are all a blur after you sent us on our way. Great Red nodded and said, All right. I know of that area. Let me bring you there. All of them were transported to that area by Great Red who opened a portal. However, the place they entered was not the same as before. There was a huge black hole present in the area of drawing everything. It's just as I thought, said Kurama. What do you mean, Kurama? Asked a confused Naruto. Thank you, Great Red. I want to explain to Naruto about what happened here, said Naruto. Switch, uh, said Kurama, switching back to Naruto. Naruto, who had a who had come back to control asked Great Red. So you do know of the problem, Great Red. What is the black hole over there? Is that a place that we came through? Great Red nodded and answered yes. It is indeed the space you entered from. When you entered this universe, you caused a hole in the space-time continuum. This caused an efflux of dark energy into your universe, creating a field of intense gravitational energy that attracts other forms of energy it to attain equilibrium once again. Naruto silently nodded. He read the various books explaining the space-time continuum when he entered this world and thought it may give him some ideas on the horizon. However, it was. Then he had a problem. Wait, if you were saying the black hole over there is trying to reach equilibrium on this side, then won't it be the same case for the other side? Why is it my world affected? How come Itachi and the others are still alive and somewhat safe? How is Itachi able to make through to this universe? Great Red continued. It might be the case that whatever method you used had allowed you to travel to a different dimension before you came upon the universal wall. If we can term it that way, it means that your world becomes unaffected in return for the dimension where you broke the wall being the one that's affected. Now, 
That brings us to another question. Why does the black hole exist? It should be highly unstable, right? Asked Naruto. He knew that newly born black holes are never meant to be this stable, as he noticed some small planets still existing near them. Under normal conditions, they should be pulled towards it and crushed by the intense gravitational force exhibited by it. You're right, under normal circumstances, this place already closed up. However, it seems a particular condition has arisen in the case. What? asked Naruto with a bewildered face. It seems that this one in the place where you entered had equal amounts of dark energy nearby. Luckily, lucky coincidence made me. I guess it attributes to the fact that there is not much matter in the space as there is on your end. An equal amount of uh, matter and energy is flowing in and out of these black holes, stabilizing them. It has an achieved a state of dynamic equilibrium. Wait. Doesn't that mean, asked Naruto with a very biased but yep, you have accidentally built a stable portal to your universe connecting two alternate realities. You could travel back if you want, as the portal is highly stable and thus allowing beings to travel into your world. However, that is only possible when you reduce the amount of power you have to 1% to the travel into without destabilizing the portal, meaning you have to be highly exhausted like the state you were in when you entered this world. Guys, are you awake? asked Naruto. Yes, we are, Naruto. We heard everything. It makes a lot of sense now, said Giyaki. We always wondered why we were not exhaust as exhausted as Kurama when we traveled to this world. It most likely seems that we were traveling here when the portal was still unstable. We expended a lot of energy and it was even more likely that we have stabilized the portal otherwise we couldn't exist here said Giyaki. he may not even be an expert with time space theory like kurama who has spent years of learning it but the element nodded on the subject hmm it seems you guys were insanely lucky said kurama agreed said sengoku refuting the statement but that still doesn't explain why kaguya was able to escape the seal or enter this world said naruto my theory is plausible now brat great red has already confirmed what i needed said naruto so let's hear it you were avoiding the subject for so long i thought you were merely guessing asked naruto kuruma narrowed his eyes and answered basically us coming to this world was a huge mistake Huh? asked Naruto with a confused expression. When we are breaking through the universal barrier, the energy we release gets converted into a form of radiations like light. Heat or those things that humans call UV rays or infrarays or gamma rays, my theory is that one of these rays which hold a particular frequency was able to resonate with a seal we made on Kaguya. Therefore, the resonance caused by damage to the seal thus was a crack in the closed dimension. Kaguya noticed this crack and continuously released energy to make it even bigger and ultimately she was able to break free allowing her to escape, said Naruto coming to the same conclusion as Kurama. He understood the situation completely. Fuck, you are right. This whole thing is my fucking screw up, isn't it? Said Naruto for me in an exasperated face. And now you know, said Kurama with an equally exasperated tone. Oh gosh, damn it, thought Naruto, clenching his head. It was his own selfish actions that caught an old enemy to break free. Great Red, who noticed Naruto's reaction, could only wonder what was going on. Naruto came back in reality, then thought, forget it. No use driveling about the past. Must focus on the present, thought Naruto, to just Great Red. I have my answer now. Thank you very much. It helped me understand a lot of stuff, said Naruto, bowing his head. Great Red waved his hand off and said, It's nothing. A small favor for a friend, that is. Naruto grinned and said, Well, it seems that you are an all right for a good friend, Red. Naruto then turned serious and told Great Red, Look, Red, I have to be honest with you. The troublesome woman who came to this universe is that, is that above me in terms of power level. I am almost near her in a way, but I am still, it would be a tough battle if I were to battle her for myself. I don't know where she is, but there is a chance you may be in danger. Great Red, Great Red. There are no words to describe Great Red's feelings of insecurities right now. He already had to deal with one feeling that could kill him, but now he hears that there is another such being like that. He did not know what to do. He turned himself into a human like Orphus and said, Naruto, my friend, my homie, my main man, please tell me you will protect me from this woman. I am already shitting my imaginary pants. Please tell me you will do something. Uh, please, said Great Red, abandoning all shame and grabbing Naruto's ties. Naruto uh, asked Kuruma and the other guys, you are, are you seeing this or am I just dreaming? <laughs> Kuruma responded as if he was seeing a movie. Yes, yes, the strongest being in this universe is hugging your thighs and begging for protection like a princess in distress. Well, it looks like those things that humans call gay porn, if you ask me, said Monopoly. <laughs> Naruto stumbled and asked, What in the actual fuck, Monobi? Why would you say that? Well, in my position, it looks like his head is directly situated over your crotch. So, said Monobi while blushing a little. 
I don't know where you learned that, but I will tell you this. This is absolutely... Ha Holy fucking shit, said Naruto when he... Uh, uh, a great row was in. It was Matabi. It <laughs> It was as Madabi said it was. Naruto then screamed, God, get off me, Great Red. No, not unless you give me your word. Or Naruto it looked at Zachary and said, Fuck, all right. I, I will get, I'll protect you. Now just get out of my crotch and let me go, you big lizard. Great Red finally let go. He turned static, but intentionally, he was dancing joyfully, thinking about his success tactic and had yielded. It was a thing that he learned from the humans. When thou want some want someone to help you without hesitation they must grab the thighs and never let go until they say so they they must be shameless as though they can be the ultimate bitch uh truly words of wisdom thought girl reds while wiping his sweat trickled down his forehead naruto didn't know why he got an urge to punch the buffoon however he got a proper look at the humanized dragon the man looked about to be six eight in height which is pretty tall comparing the world standards he had a buff body to compensate for the height all in all, he looked like an absolute giant. The man had red hair like his scales, and he had a chiseled face that was tanned out but not too much. He could have been mistaken for a gremory if it wasn't for the fact that a slit crimson eyes and purple pupils. He was wearing a traditional purple European shirt and pants along with a red tailcoat over him. He had an air dominance around him, and it was kind of reclusive around Naruto. Naruto took in his appearance and said, Why didn't you take this form when you were talking to me before? Great word, so, well, the appearance of mine is kind of a drag. I don't like it as much as it confines my freedom and movement. Naruto then sighed and said once again, continuing where he left off, Well then, like I was telling you, the woman is rather troublesome, but she is more likely to be weak right now as she had a lot of energy to break her prison, so I assume she's hiding and regaining her strength. He continued, I doubt she has any form of interest in you as her main concern in my world and its people, so I doubt you will be targeted. However, if you do face her, I want you to be extra careful, right? Just run into another dimension where she couldn't follow you. Naruto then described Kagi to Great Red. He told her about the techniques she uses and how she can avoid her. Great Red nodded in his head and gave a thumbs up. All right, thanks for the information. I will contact you if I spot her anywhere near me. Naruto nodded at his worlds and further audit. Well then, I guess we can wrap it up for now. I do have another thing though. I will be staying here to train in this area and regain my top form. As you can see, my movements were a little bit stiff and I need to be battle ready if I want to fight her head on. Great Run said, of course. You can use this area however you want. If you want a sparring partner or anyone to talk to you, just call me whatever you did before. I will be here in a jiffy. Though I hate to admit I lost, it was kind of fun battling against you. Naruto gave Great Red a grin and said, Thanks, Red. Much appreciated. Great Red then turned back to his old size and left. Naruto, where to start? Said Naruto out loud. If you want to train, I can help you, said a voice. Naruto then turned to Orphis and he first saw she was standing there with a static face. Orphis had silently watched an entire conversation between Great Red and Naruto without voicing anything. To say that she was surprised by a lot of things Naruto said and did was an understatement. Damn, I, f I forgot about her the entire time. Well, this girl is saying that she can help us. Let's, let's ask her out, said Kurama. Good question. Uh, all right, Orphis, how are you going to help us? Asked Naruto. If I understood what you were talking about with Idiot Red correctly, then you need some time. Use some time to get back into shape, don't you? Naruto stayed silent. Orphis continued. I can give you that time. I can use my powers to reduce the speed of time in a particular space I created so that you can use the train however you want, said Orphis. She then further added. However, I have given you my blessing. I have to give you my blessing for you to be affected by this. Naruto remained silent and thinking about an offer on the table before he wanted to say, No, Kuruma Rebbe, kid, accept the deal. What? Why? The space-time continuing here is pretty erratic and the dimensional gap, flowing at different rates. Though not much of a difference from what I understand by some of the clones you left in the main world, an hour may be ten there, and an hour there may be ten here. That is if we go by the maximum range. It's not constant if Orvis creates a field where it made constant. Then it's perfect for us as we know the exact time we need to leave. We will be able to understand and use our time efficiently, said Naruto, said Kuruma. The blessing? It can be erased with a uh, six paths mode, even if I can't do it. You know you, you know you have to do it. Naruto understood what Kuruma was talking about. He left some clothes in the real world. He left some clones in the real world under the orders of Kuruma. Now that he finally understood the use for them, he came to the decision. No, he came to the decision and said, "All right, Orphis, say we accept your offer. What do you want in return? I want you to join my army. However, I realize that I am not in the position to demand you, as you are much stronger than I am. I will still help you regardless," said Orphis in a rare bout of maturity. 
Naruto was bewildered and asked, Why do you want me to help even though you know that I won't help you in return? Orpha said in a mature tone in a childish way of answering as she did before. You interest me, Naruto Uzumaki. I help you I help you because you interest me. You did not need to patiently listen to me when I demanded you yet you still did. You did not need to help me when Great Red attacked, yet you did. I feel a sense of respect and gratitude that I need to repay. This I'm going to do the best way I think is possible for me. Naruto who heard this was slightly embarrassed as he, he knew that she meant nothing by it, but it was still a compliment. All forms of suspicion were throw, thrown out of the window when Orphus said that Naruto made a decision. All right, Orphus, I accept your offer. I won't most definitely join your army, but once my issue is dealt with, I can promise you that I will help you and Great Red come to a compromise. Orphus, who heard this promise, offered Naruto a ghost of a smile and nodded her head. Alright then, let's do this. Orphus then started casting her magic. Once she has done creating a field, Naruto her blessing over one of her snakes to say that Naruto was not in the tiniest bit reminded of Orochimaru's curse, mar curse mark on Sasuke was a terrible mistake. Fuck, this is exactly like that pedophile's curse mark, thought Naruto. You still haven't forgiven that snake, have you? asked Kuruma. Of course, I still don't like that bastard. The only reason I let him be was that he promised me that he won't harm any humans. Besides, he did help out with some problems of the village with his research, said Naruto. I've always wondered what that snake's genders was. Is he a man or a woman? Asked Kuruma. Beats me. I asked this kid Mitsu the same in detail, but he is not sure. All I know for sure is that he's a creepy old dude in a young body, said Naruto. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, you have no right to complain in that regard, said Naruto. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you too, asshole. Dipshit. Fuzz butts. Sasuke's little ball boy. The fuck was that, you furball with daddy issues? Say that again, Brad. I dare you. I said I said it once already, furball. Seems your rabbit ears are not helping you hear it. Grr, come at, come here, you little shit. It's about time I teach you some manners. Oh yeah, it's about time I discipline you, you disobedient furball. Here we go again, said Madabi. Well, it happens all the time. I guess humans call it brotherly love, said Jiomi. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, said Geeky. All of them entered the subdimensional space with the internal discussion slash fight was going on in Naruto's mind. Naruto had entered back in reality in a few moments of time. He then saw Orphus who looked at him. Orphus explained, the time here is much slower than outside the world. I have decided to reduce it by eight times as the maximum limit within space can hold without breaking apart. So eight months inside would only be a month in a human world. Thank you, Orphus, said Naruto. So in reality, I just want to put this out here. It's basically like the time chamber from Dragon Ball. Orphus accepted the gratitude and said, I may not have mentioned this but before, but I also also have another reason to help you. Naruto looked at her with a curious expression. Orphus continued, although I do not want to help you out of gratitude, I also want to continue my own existence. If this lady you speak and describe is more powerful than you, who is already more powerful than me, then I have 0% chance to survive if she decides to target me. Thus, I believe that you may, that you may, that I want to help you in every way I can. She added further, I am leaving this space now. You can train here in peace. You can have an entire, you can enter this place any time you want to do so. I have given permission for only you and myself to access this place and no one else will disturb you. Farewell, Naruto Uzumaki. Orpheus then left the space without further interaction. So she She's scared, huh? Thought Naruto. She is a being that has existed in this world since the beginning. She has lived a life facing no threats to her life. That is illogical for her to fear death when there exists a being that can kill her, said Kurama. Never mind her. We have a goal now. Since this space was created by Orphus, we don't need to worry about the limit for using energy to continuously stay here. You can release the chakra mode and train normally, said Naruto. Yeah, that's true. I am going to take I'm going to use this opportunity. I got to its fullest potential. I already have food supplies and training materials to last several years, so I don't think I am going to have any problems with this change of plans, said Naruto with performance cross hand side. Multi shadow clone jutsu. Nearly 1,000 clones were created in an instant with Naruto's chakra. He then organized each group of clones and had them all train of the shinobi art forms. May it be the basic chakra control, or making new seals, or mastering new elemental jutsu. While they did that, Naruto did his best to reduce his body weight as, as much as he can. He continuously exercised like Rock Lee till his bones broke and his muscles tore. Kuruma then healed with him with his chakra, then Naruto restarted the process. Seven months and 29 days later, so it's a time skip. Naruto was training like crazy in the spatial field. He had finally stopped doing so when an alarm clock went off on his phone. I still don't understand how these little beauties work, said Naruto. It's not better to question some things you don't understand, Naruto said Kuruma. 
Well, it's the last day, so let's just relax, said Naruto, ending his training. Naruto had changed a lot. He was a lot fitter, and he finally lost all forms of fat on his body. He had now, the, he had now had an athlete's body with the compact muscles. If one sees Naruto now, now they definitely wouldn't be able to relate with him. Naruto took out a mirror in a bag. He looked at himself and said, Fuck, look at that beard. I look like a guy, what's his name? Oh. Osama Bin Laden. It's Osama Bin Laden. You, Yeah, your beard is long. So, is your hair long in your head, said Kuruma? Naruto looked like a wild man covering up his face. Naruto immediately formed a shadow clone and instructed to cut his hair. The clone did so. He first cut his hair and then shaved his beard on his face. Naruto unclothed himself and created a small pub out of wood style. He then asked the clone to use water style to shower him and he created another clone and instructed it to fill the tub with water and heat it. The clones d did so, and finally Naruto relaxed in the bath. Once he cleansed himself, Naruto made his way out of the tub and took a while to dry himself. He then took some spare clothes underneath with a black arm blue pants and red shinobi sandals. Now then, with that hair out of the way, his face looked much more cleaner. It looked oval, bringing, brimming with energy. His whisker marks were not noticeable before, as his facial hair looked much more visible due to his completely shaving his beard. His... Hair has retained its length during his teenage years. He looked much more like his father than he ever did before. Well, looking sharp, Naruto. Though the things you were wearing are kind of over the top, said Madabi, giving Naruto fashion advice. Well, I didn't have any other clothes on me. This is all I had. Plus, it's not over the top. I just look fabulous, said Naruto. Hmm, once an idiot, always an idiot, said Kurama. Oi, enough, brat. Let's just get out of here. We've been training long enough successfully. Yeah, Naruto... In training, uh, took time working hard like he never did before. He hadn't given this much time to train ever in his life than other training with Triple Jiraiya. He sp he sparred with Tail Beast and mastered each chakra nature to the terrifying degree. The Mokun ability that he was never able to master, he mastered it completely. He then gained the ability from the Hashirami cells that Sakura used to regenerate his arm. He was able to unlock the ability as Madara did in the later half of his size as he hadn't trained his techniques that deeply because he gained it just as he lost Hinata. However, was... However, now this was a different case. Orphus stopped by the time to help him. Great Red also accompanied him for some time, and he had access to all dimensions in unreality. So he was the one exception to Orphus's rule. He was able to. He he was confident that he was a, a level now. He packed his materials and sealed and nodded. All right, let's return. He then formed a hand side that flashed in a form of yellow. Back to Ko Academy. Naruto decided to enter the ORC building at first to greet everyone, but it seems the ORC already had visitors. Naruto flashed outside and knocked on the door and entered. Hey everyone, I am... Oh, it seems I am interrupting on something, said Naruto, with a, at a, looking at a couple of faces. He noticed a bunch of beautiful young girls in various outfits surrounding a blonde-haired man in a flashy white shirt that screamed, Hey, I sell cocaine. Want to buy a pack? Nearby was an adult lady that stood out. She had silver hair and a voluptuous body. Oddly, though, Naruto noticed that she was dressed in a blue maid outfit. She looks hot, thought Naruto. Hello there. It seems I am interrupting something, so I will come back at a later time, said Naruto, uh, turning to leave the room. Though the man in white did not allow Naruto to leave and fired a spell at the door, he then impatiently asked Naruto, Who the hell are you, human? How do you? How dare you interrupt Riser's meeting with the lovely Rias? Announce yourself. Naruto did not, did not lose his cool out of arrogant behavior of the one called Riser and said, "Who me? I am nobody important. I am Naruto Uzumaki, just a gardener hired by the school." The important question here is, though, said Naruto as he moved towards the Gremory group. He stood in the middle. He stood in the middle of Redhead's barrage along with Konako. He, he tense head with his hand relaxing on her stiff shoulders and continued talking. Who the hell are you, chicken shit? And that wraps up chapter 8. I know this chapter was fucking awesome, okay? And I cannot wait to read chapter 9 and post it. So thank you for all the support on this series. And this is probably going to be like a 30-minute video. So again, please like and subscribe. These take forever to make. And I love talking about them. So without further ado, Spartanic Arts DXD out.